Are y'all ready? It's the finale, so it's going to be a longer one. This one, this is about to be the whole rest of the video. So get your popcorn, get your snacks, get all that stuff. Get your banquet meals, <laughs> get your Wendy's chili, get all, get, get everything. We're going to get right on into it, man. We're going to get right on into this. Wingo. Let's go. Oh, what we do right here. All right, y'all. Let's go. It's hard to walk away from, you know, mm -hmm basically being able to get advice at any time of the day any day of the week it's hard to walk away from you know being somebody of importance to going back into a world where you're nobody even after alienating so many other creators his relationship with his friends on the painkiller already podcast remained consistent but this would not last here we go what a lot of people don't know is um, I kind of grew up without a father figure. I mean, for, for the most part, there were there were like guy figures in my life throughout my life. My mother was an attractive woman during her 20s and 30s and even 40s. Over the next year, Jordy quietly continued to produce videos. The long the fact that he said that his mom was like I tried to like and hearing him saying some like shit about his sister and stuff like. He continued, however, the fewer views he was receiving on his channel, but this didn't stop him from sharing a woman he had begun dating sometime in August of 2012, named Brandy, whom he had met on a dating website. Just the famous Brandy. Says he had Shalene. The little miss somebody who, who you know got. They say Brandy's been. People would donate and say Brandy got. Compared to Shaleen, however, she would feature much less prominently in his content. He also became much more susceptible to radical mood swings. In early 2013, Machinima released him from his contract, and he created a video discussing this, titled Rock Bottom. I made a few decisions in my life that really crippled me when they dropped me. Because I had like a... Um, a three-year contract with Machinima. I signed one. And under the premise of me signing a three-year contract, I uh, bought things and made obligations that I normally otherwise would not have. So basically, my channel's not doing very well. I've been going into the red for February, March, April, May, June. Five months now. And when I got that week off, it kind of... It kind of like kickstarted a lazy bug in me, and when you start getting lazy, you start laying down, you start sleeping more, you start getting depressed, you start realizing how fat you are, and end up being fat depresses you, and that makes you want to eat. When you eat, you feel depressed, and and it, it's just the constant cycle of a, being a failure. That on top of just the negative comments, people are always like, why do you ha why do you point and just zero in those negative comments and like I just can't help it I can't I used to have the skin of an elephant back in modern world he used to have the skin of an elephant y'all for two you know maybe black ops one I could care fuck less what you said about me Soon after, however, he joined another company, Full Screen Arcade, but he was making significantly less money from this contract. Around this same time, perhaps attempting to increase viewer retention and income, he began speaking more to YouTube drama, often eschewing the gameplay component of Call of Duty commentary so he could simply talk to the camera in a more normal vlog format. Throughout 2013, his channel would continue in much the same way that it had, trending towards sharing information about his life and speaking his mind on any number of topics, from YouTube drama to national news headlines to his thoughts on the existence of aliens. He would even have a friend record doctors draining a boil after he became infected with MRSA, a sort oh. of drug resistance. What is that thing? That's a boil? Oh, for one, he looks like a waterbed, but that's neither here nor there. That's disgusting. Infection, then upload it to his channel, including a close-up of the bacteria and pus oozing from his skin. Similarly, on Painkiller Already 140... That reminds me of Fairly Odd Parents, the dude who had the boil. <laughs> the dude, it was his boy was always angry, and it would talk. I will kill you. What the hell was that? He discussed a rather graphic and personal scene. 
It's one of the worst feelings I've ever had in my life. I mean, the only other feeling that I could even contemplate with that would be the time I was constipated and oh, the no. went sideways on me. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, that doesn't even make sense. Let me, let me tell. Let me tell the story. I had a really bad bout of constipation, and this was when I was on my diet in early 2011. I, w I started doing Slim Fast to replace my lunches. One thing I didn't learn about Slim Fast is it dehydrates you really, really badly. Like, you have to drink a lot of water when you're on Slim Fast when you're placing it as meals, and I didn't do that. So I got dehydrated really bad. I'm talking about three or four turds deep. Like, it just hurt to walk. So <laughs> I, I, I feared pooping for about a week, so what I did is I ended up going to get a saline enema. And um, I had my grandma give me a saline enema, and it softened it up enough to pass, but it only got a little bit. So, like, it softened, like, the first three-fourths of a turd. <laughs> I get on the toilet, and a saline enema, like, stimulates the muscles to actually make it come out. So I do it, it goes, <laughs> and then that little piece, probably about this big, hits it, and turns like that and it spreads my butthole wide open i fall <laughs> off the toilet and i hit my head onto the wall and i call out for my grandma i'm like you might have to take me to the hospital well, what we ended up doing is she ended up sticking her finger up my button and mashing the turd up <laughs> <laughs> now i know how to ask a question guys but midway through that year what this pattern fuck, would see a remarkable short-term change while recording the Painkiller Already podcast, FPS Kyle proposed a way to help Jordy finally lose weight. One episode, I, I threw this at Wings because, you know, he was bemoaning his... his, his, his Stationary uh, life. Sure. And I said, uh, look, man, come to my house. We'll do a fucking month-long boot camp. We'll get the fans behind it. We'll, we'll do a Kickstarter to get you, like, fitness gear, supplies. Um, you know, we'll, we'll film the entire thing. We'll, we'll make posters, we'll make coffee mugs, we'll, we'll get like a big viewership. Not only will this revive your body, it'll revive your YouTube channel. Uh, this will be amazing. Come to my house, I'll take a month out of my schedule, I will devote it to you, we'll do this thing together. It'll be fun. I, I sort of half-heartedly meant it. I didn't really expect him to ever <laughs> say yes, because of all the things that we told you so far, you know, he doesn't get out of his bubble too much. And then, the man said yes. What's more, these videos would be hosted on Jordy's channel where he could collect the advertising revenue. With the plan in place, Kyle prepared for Jordy to move in. And so that night I was uh, taking, my, taking a shower in my shower after the show and, and uh, I was washing my hair and I bumped my elbow on the shower wall and I was like, God, the shower is a little narrow. And then it occurred to me, Wings of Redemption could not fit into my shower. <laughs> and if he was going to live with me, we would have to put in a new shower. So construction began the next day on a $5,000 shower. <laughs> we, we tore out. Jordy arrived at what? Kyle's house on October 13th, 2013. Yeah, so he did a lot to accommodate for Wings being there, man. That's crazy. In the video updating people on his arrival, he was visibly nervous, bouncing his leg and fidgeting as he spoke. This wasn't surprising. He was a self-admitted homebody, preferring to stay in his mother's mobile home with his grandmother. Um, it's, it's a really big change in life, and it, it's a change that kind of makes you feel better about yourself. Um, On October 31st, the first video was uploaded, with the series titled FPS Boot Camp in all capital letters. The beginning showed Jordy squirming across the floor and pulling himself with a rope. He is allowed to use his legs. As long as he's moving weight, it's a good thing. Pull, pull. What became immediately clear, however, was that FPS Kyle had no experience as a personal trainer, and he was using his common knowledge to construct routines for Jordy. At the end of the first day, Jordy filmed himself in the new bathtub that Kyle had installed for him, and somberly reminisced about when he was stronger and lighter. Um. I was kind of disappointed in myself how I uh, I wasn't as strong as I as I remember myself being, but I guess that's the way most things happen. Is you you always feel like you're you're better at a certain point. Like um, I find myself remembering um, thinking back to uh, when I used to be like 330 pounds, and I got, back then I thought I was really really heavy and. Um, like now I'd kill to be 330. Like, good oh lord, that's 110 pounds. You know, 
and that's exactly what it is at this point. It's 110 pounds, and there's really nothing you can, uh, really nothing. It's really got to be miserable to just be that big. I'm being honest, like, golly. Like, I'm a bigger dude, but I'm like 6'3", you know what I mean? I'm a, I'm a, you know, I'm a bigger dude. I ain't a bigger dude. That's, this dude is. You see how you lifted that shit up? You lifted that shit. He, he, walk around with that much weight gotta be miserable. That's all I'm saying. God what you can damn. do about it, but it's uh, really cool. Like, I, I, I feel really good that Kyle's helping me out here. I mean, he's being a really good friend doing this. And like, it did. All right, so he's right. The dude is being a really good friend and doing a lot of things to accommodate a wings being there. Like, I don't know anybody else who would do that. That's good shit. Um, let's just see. I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see how wings fuck this up. Cause it seems like everything, every time something like, you know, life hands you lemons and then instead of making lemonade, wings always makes piss. Despite his struggle, the new video performed well, receiving 50,000 views within the first 12 hours. The next day, he discussed more of his hardship with the routine. Apparently, he had also broken the bed that Kyle had let him use. My microphone, I forgot my headset, um, the bed I ended up breaking on the first night. They had like a futon bed here, and uh, I felt real bad about that. So, um... Even so, his attitude was positive, buoyed by the high view count of the first episode of FPS Boot Camp. In order to help fund Jordy's stay with Kyle, a crowdfunding campaign was created on either November 1st or 2nd, asking for $2,500. According to the comments, this goal was doubled within 24 hours, and by the time the campaign ended, it had raised over $8,000. Wow. These videos continued, and ironically, the large amount of support Jordy was receiving was creating significant pressure on him to perform. And everybody had his back, man. That's the thing, man. We can go, everybody had your back. And now look how you treat people. And these people genuinely, genuinely wanted to see you get better, improve your life so you could live. It's crazy. It's, it's beyond belief how much support I've been getting through these videos. Um, and like, it, 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 it motivates me. Like when I'm, when I'm on there, um, in, in this video right here, you're seeing me make almost three minutes on the elliptical. The entire time I was on the elliptical, I thought about all the people sitting there rooting for me and how I can't fail. And like, failing at this point would be letting everybody down, including myself. Um, and I don't want to fail. And like, I think this year might be the year where I can keep that promise to myself where I don't want to be overweight on my birthday. I failed last year, but this year might be it. Being overweight might be a stage in my life and not my entire life. The FPS boot camp videos continued with significant progress being made. Jordy's mood improved more and more as he continued, bolstered by his significant weight loss. I'm shedding something like two and a half to four pounds a day depending on what I do that day and what I eat and like it's almost inhuman the way my body is burning fat right now what wasn't shown in these videos were Jordy's significant <laughs> it reminds me of uh not to get political and I don't get political but it's like it reminds me of when Trump when, it, when Trump had COVID or something and he was like, the doctor said I had the greatest body in the world. <laughs> He's never seen a body like mine handle COVID easily. <laughs> it, is, it was just, it just reminded me. The latter likely <laughs> body is just shedding fat. <laughs> brought on in part by Kyle's lack of knowledge as a nutritionist. Living with him outside of the workout was one of the most horrible ordeals of my life. <laughs> that month was one of the worst months of my life because Wings lives wow. within his own bubble. He doesn't socialize, and so he doesn't curtail himself to social norms. Right away, myself, my roommate Kitty, and my girlfriend were in my kitchen, and the bathroom is visible from the kitchen. And we hear this noise of water flowing into more water. 
and we all look up ponderously, and the bathroom door is agape, and Wings is pissing. And we, <laughs> and we can see most of him. I couldn't see the penis, nor could he. <laughs> but he was pissing. And we all did, and, and we were all wow. just in shock. And finally, my roommate Kitty yelled, Close the goddamn door! You're pissing with the door open! She's British, as you, if you can't tell. <laughs> and we all just bust out laughing. Like, can you believe it? <laughs> a little Peppa Pig roommate. He's, he's like, what? What's the big deal? You know, just taking a piss. It's not like I was shitting. <laughs> Strong you know, point. Shitting. When I put him on the FPS Kyle di diet, which is a lot of salads and grilled chicken, basically, he didn't shit for a week. <laughs> he didn't shit for so long. I called the only person who I truly know is a bit of a fitness expert, Joe Lozon, who's a UFC fighter, a man who is literally a fitness expert. He, he's a professional fighter, professional athlete, big name in the UFC. I'm like, he hasn't shat in four days, dude. <laughs> he's like, what? Huh. He hasn't shat in four days. What do we do? He's like, well... If three or four more days go by, you know, it's gonna be a problem. <laughs> it's like, I'm like I, it's already a problem, I think. Like, like, no just shit. I'm just picturing the meals that he's taken in. That's still inside him somewhere. Like, like he's more that's piling stuffing on down top. the musket barrel. Yeah, I, it's it, like, like he's overloaded. This, you know, I, I've seen what happens when you put the wrong ammunition into a gun. It is. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Like, like, what? Are we gonna blow this man's asshole out? That was occurring to my, to me, as I pondered over his constipation. And so we're getting him these chia seed drinks from the grocery store, which are supposed to aid and and passing, you know, making you regular, making you poop. We're filling his diet with fiber. I, I believe there was like shredded wheat and uh, and chia seed drinks and all of this stuff. And finally, like seven or eight days in. I mean, I had to replace the toilet. Not because anything was wrong with it, but just out of principle. After You he left, knew what happened in there. I knew what had happened there. It was like... Two weeks into the program, Jordy was beginning to feel discouraged after his weight had plateaued, and he approached Kyle wanting to return home. Kyle was only barely able to convince him to stay for the last two weeks. When Jordy arrived back at his mother's mobile home, he seemed ecstatic about the amount of weight he had lost. This inspired him to make a video of himself dropping weights roughly equivalent to the lost weight in order to show what he called the, quote, destructive power that I have taken off my body. Shortly afterwards, he hired a personal trainer named Drew using the extra money left over from the crowdfunding campaign, and he seemed relatively good-natured about it, laughing alongside Drew and poking fun at himself. Could you put up some decent weight, considering we just got started you haven't done this in a while, but the, 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 um... Endurance there. He doesn't want to embarrass me. I did, I, 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 I did 12 reps of 100, <laughs> and then I went straight to 15 pounds, and I struggled. However, he also mentioned that he had started struggling with his diet and had gone back to eating high-calorie foods. And a lot of it's my appetite has slowly been coming back. When I was at Kyle's house, I was isolated. I had people pretty much feeding me. I was, yeah, but now since I took over the diet, I've been slipping more and more and more. That's what you needed, though, man. You needed to be, you needed to be in a way where you like food. The food that you wanted wasn't so easy to get. You know what I mean? So like, and it's like it was kind of like you were in a rehab, man. Like, food is no joke. Food can be addicting. There's no, I'm not gonna compare it to drugs, but it's you know it's addicting like a drug. Like, and you were you were fiending. Once that month started, the end of the month started, you know linger and happen you started fiending you started oh, I, need, I, I need this i need this you know what i mean just like an addict low-key you know so like you gotta you should have stuck it through man how are we going to fix this Drew? while it's uncertain when these bad habits resumed this may have been in part because his girlfriend brandy had broken up with him but while he had taken action to improve his physical health, the health of his friendships had degraded significantly, and this would culminate. So, Wing has got a personal trainer who is. Okay, and <laughs> and they're saying, you know, they break up. You know, did she really get black? Like, nah, I don't know. I don't know the situation with that. I just wanted to make a stupid joke. I'm childish. Culminate in an event that would isolate him more than his reclusive lifestyle already had.
I like how Spider-Man on that shirt was like sunk deep in a roll. Like it was just a sinkhole. In March of 2014, during the Painkiller Already podcast, Jordy, Woody, Kyle, and the newer fourth member, Lefty, discussed and considered going on what they called a survival trip, during which they would go out into the wilderness without food, water, or shelter, bringing only some survival implements such as flint and steel, a water purifier, and sleeping bags. <laughs> These dudes doing Minecraft <laughs> in real life. Fuck that. Of the four, Woody, Kyle, and Jordy committed to going. Me, myself, I've always wanted to try these skills out. Um, it's not because I don't really have any of these skills. I have what you call book knowledge. Like I know how to start a fire. I know how to, you know, dis different north from other directions. I, I've watched so many, so many survival. I don't think he can start a fire. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't think that he can start a fire. Travel shows. Their preparation was minimal, and Jordy uploaded videos of himself attempting to light a fire using a magnesium starter. Damn. Did he do it? Was scheduled to leave approximately a month <laughs> after they had seriously considered the idea in mid-April of 2014. However, Jordy's survival kit was scant, gathering only two knives, a walking stick, gloves, boots, and two fire starters. By the time he was supposed to leave, he had only expanded this kit with a can of bug repellent and a third fire starter. The compass he bought was broken. Some viewers noticed in his preparation day video there was a bottle of soda in the car, I've suggesting seen it. that he had again been failing in his diet. At last, yeah. the day had come for them to go on their survival trip, but immediately, Jordy's compatriots began Big to sense cut. a problem. I'm driving in the night before, and I think to myself, hey, let me give old Wings a call, make sure we're all good to go here you know i've seen because a little bit of this it's wings call him up say, hey man you get ready to do this thing i'm i'm driving in now about three hours from the place what, what are you up to you know you could leave if you left right now you'd be here around 11 and uh you know you could you could share this motel room with me i, I could get i could get a room with two beds or something he's like i'm not going what what, what, what do you mean I, i'm not coming when were you going to tell me i'm telling you right now what what the so I call, I, I, I text Woody. I'm like, he's not fucking going. He's not fucking going. And so Woody gets on the phone with him. Woody tries to talk. And I'm thinking like, Woody's going to talk him into this. I'm still driving with this idea. Woody will talk him into this. Woody's a great motivational speaker when he needs to be. And I'm sure Woody There's was There's some him compilations with... of me telling Wings, like, you know, if you want to be an extraordinary person, you have to do extraordinary things. <laughs> be a winner, not a loser. Be a doer, not a donter. You know, Very that, Henry Rollins-esque, yeah. Yeah, this sort of talk, you know, and... and he just doesn't fucking come. He just mm. doesn't fucking come. And, and 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 it's that's so inconsiderate, man. Like you know, wings in your head that you weren't going the whole time, and you knew that you weren't gonna bail. You should have just. That's so rude. Now it's just me and Woody in the woods. Now it's just. <laughs> now it's just kind of weird. It it's got just me gay. And on April 14th, he uploaded a video attempting to defend his decision, though his confidence in his defense was weak enough for him to disable likes and dislikes. Obviously, I didn't show up on, I didn't go to the PK survival trip today. And I've seen people tell me like, oh, why don't you go now? Go now. Do it. Dude, that's not an option. And the reason I didn't tell them ahead of time is mainly because I didn't want to basically start the trend up before and have them try to talk me out of it because i'd already made my mind up i wasn't going to go i didn't want to deal with it you think i want to be this person you think i want to wanted to make a decision where you know it could be the mean, mean the end of my channel or the end of friendships do you think i want to be like on the outs with kyle and woody no i don't but the fact is I got to the so got to the point emotionally where I was willing to risk my channel never rebounding. I was willing to risk my friendship with Kyle and Woody because I was afraid of this trip, and that right there should speak volumes, volumes, of where I was at mentally. Um, the comments were almost universally derisive, criticizing him for his cowardice and for his numerous excuses. The next Painkiller Already podcast was filmed shortly after Woody and Kyla returned, and Jordy was conspicuously absent. In place of his avatar was a small tombstone, and for the most part, they avoided talking about him. <laughs> wow. Uh, yes, yes, I suppose we should talk about the elephant in the room. 
Yeah, so we've decided, uh, it was a group decision, we decided that uh, Wings of Redemption wasn't going to continue with us. You know, he, he's, he's having a hard time, and uh, he's, he's made some decisions that we didn't feel were, were so friendly, so for the time being. While the comments showed a strong dissatisfaction with the decision, the hosts were not swayed, and it became clear that they had no intention of inviting Jordy back for the foreseeable future. While Woody uh. had refrained from speaking on the matter, Jordy's attitude on Twitter pushed him to discuss it in a video he released on May 30th, a month and a half after the trip, in which he seemed visibly hurt by what Jordy had said about him and Kyle. He, um, the core of it is he says like these guys were, that the PKA crew were never friends to him, that we never called him, um, we didn't share you know, the money with him and, and things like that. And that frustrates me because it's a lie and that's that's kind of why he's gone because it was this like this constant backstabbing this constant taking shots at him every time he fell into some sort of slump or got grumpy or whatever he would lash out at all the people that were close to him the truth is like if you follow wings on twitter you know that sometimes he'll just go off about all his personal problems and put that on twitter and uh and I would be the guy that texted him or called him and, and tried to sort of work it out. I was the guy that held his Twitter account to, to sort of back off on that a little bit. When obviously Jesus was, he said that he was gonna rape my daughter, rape my wife after he kicked my ass and he called Colin retarded a hundred times and Wings what donated money talk? to that guy because he thought it would make him look good. Um, Wings gave search engine optimization tips when, when people were attacking Colin. Uh, it, it like the the list is long man oh remember wings went on uh keemstar's podcast and said that we never gave him any of the money from the show why would he say that i have taken so much undeserved shit for stuff like that and and now if you follow him he says he just lost a third of his income right right and to say that we were never his friends is not fair we would do so much for him we tried to help him so often <sighs> I want the best for Wings, I really do, but I can't have him in my life anymore because he's been so terrible to me and my family. You've been toxic. Sometimes you just gotta cut that toxicity out of your life. You know, it's not. It's, at some point, it's gotta be worth it. You know what I mean? It's just not worth it to keep him around, especially if it's gonna cost y'all your sanity. So you did a good move, Woody. And uh, and has done nothing to ever make up for it. I mean, people make mistakes, but this is a guy who talks without thinking and has a policy of never apologizing. And when you combine that, you get a guy that just takes and takes and never gives. And um, either you get some help so that you can deal with this and compartmentalize the hate and push it to the side, or you reorganize your life so that you don't get this kind of hate anymore. Because what you have now, it's not working for you, man. You're you're spiraling down, and you need to be on your way up. That's uh, that that's where it is. But you know, for my participation, I I mean, <laughs> I feel like I'm the lifeguard, and you've been trying to pull me under for five years, and uh, and after a while, you know, the debt's paid. As Jordy yeah. continued to upload videos, his viewership dwindled further. Attempting to buoy his view count, he utilized clickbait titles for his videos and would comment on national news and drama, even talking about an incident when Chris Chan pepper sprayed a GameStop employee. He would also upload videos of himself playing games besides competitive first-person shooters, but these would consistently underperform, with some of them never reaching more than 10,000 views. He struggled maintaining wow. his workout routine and diet, halting and then restarting both multiple times. His personal trainer, Drew, would occasionally cameo to talk about Jordy's progress, his goals, and the workouts he was doing, but Jordy's attitude had turned dour. You know, this week Brandy, I don't know if you guys remember Brandy, but Brandy was my last girlfriend. She basically went to a relationship with another guy and it's like, man, that shit sucks, dude. As you can see, my luck firsthand, like, if, if I didn't have bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. Jordan family motto. By this point, Keemstar had turned drama alert from an occasional Twitter post to a full show, and on October 2nd, 2014, a post that Jordy made was featured. I've played with the idea of waiting my money out and shooting myself in the head. 
I even bought a hollow point bullets to do it with. <laughs> His impression is pretty good. Coming from somebody who could do a few impressions, that's pretty that's really good. As Jordy continued to struggle, he would occasionally post to his social media about thoughts of suicide, such as in a Facebook post. On I think that was an impression. That's how good it was. I wasn't even sure that the impression that was really him speaking. October 13th, 2014, that read in part, quote, I don't joke around about stuff like that. I don't want to kill myself, and you don't kill yourself for attention. You do it to escape pain. Life was and still is a huge disappointment full of pain. Attached to the post was a picture of a package of bullets. Hoping to rebuild his career, he started a new podcast in February of 2015 titled The Podcast Show, which surprisingly featured White Boy 7th Street, one of those who had joined for Keemstar's stream a few years prior. However, as the months continued, this show would lose viewership as well, dipping from 40,000 views to 13,000 by August. This reflected an overall trend on his channel. That same month also saw his Let's Plays sometimes netting less than 3,000 views. All of this was in spite of his subscriber count of approximately 450,000, which had decayed from 510,000. Even his videos which featured FPS gameplay would struggle to pass 15,000 views, while others would never reach it. By this point, it was clear that Jordy would not be rejoining the regular Painkiller Already hosts, though he would still be invited occasionally for uneventful discussion. As he lost motivation, he would both upload and stream less, continuing into 2016. Because uh, around January 2013, I stopped trying as hard. Well. I was born, I was worn out, I was posting three videos a day, I was doing the most I could, and my entire life revolved around numbers. What killed my channel was me. I pretty much killed my channel because no shit. I allowed myself to become so obsessed with money that I never took time out to enjoy myself. And it, it molded me into a person that I didn't like. Attempting to explain himself, he released a video on August 26th, 2016 called I'm going to the doctor. So, you might be asking me, like, well, Jordy, what are you up to lately? You don't really do YouTube that often. You know, you stream rarely. Um, uh, the last couple of years, I've developed this thing called anxiety. And I never used to have it. <laughs> What's that? I've never heard, of, never heard of that thing. What is that thing? <laughs> um, but now it hits me in waves. As 2017 came, his uploads continued to dwindle along with his viewership, and this coincided with an increase in his weight again. Where he had once been approximately 380 pounds, he now was approximately 470 pounds, and he was beginning to complain about his back pain more. He had been discussing bariatric surgery as a method to reduce his weight for many years, but as his weight continued to increase, this surgery grew more and more appealing, and he soon began to see it as the only way to improve his life, believing oh no. that he could not have any job besides making gaming content at his current weight. What's more, another aspect of his financial situation was slowly coming to be known. For some time, Jordy had been paying for his mother's mortgage on the modular home. She had promised Jordy that once he was finished paying it for her, she would give it to him. He had even boasted that he had made the last payment on the mortgage in a video on October 23rd, 2014. But at some point, once the mortgage was paid off, she went back on her word, and instead of giving the house over to Jordy, she took out a second mortgage and promised Jordy that this time, once he had paid off the new mortgage, he would receive the house, and so he continued to pay. Despite these payments, his credit rating was still incredibly low because instead of paying them directly, he was transferring money into his mother's bank account every month. Recognizing that his YouTube channel was likely not worth pursuing much longer, he changed his focus to Twitch, choosing to rely on live streams more than videos. According to himself, in 2016, he would average anywhere between 250 to 400 viewers at a time. However, he quickly gained a reputation for being aggressive and volatile, both towards those with whom he was playing and his own viewers, banning people from minor infractions or saying things he disagreed with. One person from Reddit noted in 2017 that, quote, When I left YouTube, he said he was going to lose weight, but he is fatter than ever. Not only that, but he is meaner than ever. He talks to his viewers like shit. 
One guy genuinely offered to teach him how to properly play Rainbow Six, which Wings was struggling at, and Wings told him, if you keep backseat gaming, I'm gonna fucking block you. Then he told a 36-month wow. subscriber that he hopes their parents die in a car wreck because the kid beat him in a 1v1. Keep in mind, this is a 30-year-old man. Hey, uh, whatever, I hope your family dies in an automobile wreck. What? On top of this, wow. he seems very depressed now. Wow. He spends every stream just constantly bitching about how he doesn't get enough viewers to support his fat, lazy, degenerate lifestyle. <laughs> it makes me feel unwanted as a fan. He right. also complains and gets very angry literally every time he dies. I've never heard Wings admit he got outplayed. It's always outside forces that cause him to die in game, whether it be lag, OP weapons, bad teammates, etc. It's literally never his fault. I even saw him throw a controller at his TV out of anger. Also, yeah, no his shirt, shirt was dirty. It looked like he hadn't showered in three <laughs> days and he was greasy. I really hope he can find it within himself to get his life together. He also said that he had a gun in his hand, was considering killing himself because he wasn't getting the Twitch viewers he feels he deserves and if he can't make a living off of video games then he doesn't want to live. He legit said that shit. But soon, due to a quirk of YouTube's algorithm, he would again attract attention and viewership of an entirely different kind. Uh oh. Joke's on them. If they join one more time, I'm going back online and I'm stacking a team up. On November 16th, 2017, a YouTube user going by Sean Ranklin posted a video titled Sean Things Ranklin. of Redemption Get Shout out to the GOAT, Mr. Sean Ranklin. It's stream sniped and loses it. Up to this point, people had learned that they could annoy- Is this the look here, look listen? I think this is the look here, look listen. I think. Boy Jordy by joining his games and harassing him, much to the amusement of many of those watching. During one stream, he was apparently having difficulty controlling his temper, reacting more strongly than usual, and Sean Ranklin created a compilation showcasing this. Come the fuck on, man! Real talk! Real talk. Dude, shut the fuck up, dude. You're a little <laughs> kid. <laughs> Webby, fucking leave, dude. Like, uh, if, if somebody could give me, like, their information, like, their name, their address, the number, how I can get in contact with these guys, I would really like to know because, like, I'm seriously considering um, suing them. No, they're, they're joining through recent players. Look here. Look here! Look, listen! Yes. Appearing offline does not fucking stop it. So stop giving fucking advice you know nothing about. <laughs> That's one of my favorite, like, my favorite quotes or moments right there. I don't know why. It's just, it's just, it's, it's just, it's it. Um, I'm banning anybody trying to give me advice. <laughs> Real talk. Damn. <laughs> so much for cooling down. All right, guys. Um, I give up. I don't know when I'll stream again. I really need to make this fucking money. I, I really wanted to get this fucking surgery, man. I've wanted it so fucking bad. <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't take this shit no more, man. I want, all I wanted to do was, like, I was fucking lonely. I wanted to just fucking stream and, and, and have a good time. Maybe have a good game. <laughs>
I try. I really try not to laugh, but like, damn, man, like, <laughs> I hate my life. This video quickly went viral, and as of today, it has 1.4 million views. With the success of this first video, Sean would continue creating highlight videos of Jordy's streams, focusing on perceived faults in his character. The success of Sean Ranklin's channel encouraged similar compilation channels, and over the months, more and more would appear, combing through his streams to find moments that they found particularly egregious or of entertainment value. References to these videos would begin to populate his stream chat, especially memorable phrases from Sean's first upload such as look here, look listen, and variations on ban anyone who tries to give me advice. He would audibly order his mods to ban anyone who used certain terms or said certain things, but these bans were easily circumvented with new accounts. Look at that bullshit, dude. I put so many hours into Rainbow Six, and all I've done is lose viewers. I lost five subscribers while playing Rainbow Six. Five. I had a. I was struggling to keep 150 views. I'm almost at 300 on a game I fucking hate. It's a game I fucking hate, dude. I detest this game. This game makes me hate fucking life. It really does. And motherfuckers that come in here just to watch this shit, I hate you too. I literally do. That's gonna make people support you. Tell that noise in the background. I'm sorry if y'all can hear that. I don't know what the hell that is. Somebody working on something. It's not a nice day to be out there working on anything. Wish you just wouldn't show well, up so I didn't have to play this shit. So like, it would just fail like Rainbow Six. With pressure now coming from viewers looking to antagonize him, Jordy continued to lean more and more heavily onto the idea that some form of bariatric surgery would improve and even fix his life. On December 2nd, 2017, he posted a video to his channel to solicit opinions from his viewership. He noted that he was considering multiple kinds of surgery, but more importantly, he had yet to decide where he would receive it. If he chose America, it would cost in excess of $25,000, but if he went to the Mexico Bariatric Center, the total cost would be closer to $6,000, and since his income had decreased significantly over the years, the latter was proving the more favorable. Scare like, the surgery scares me to shit. Um, but, like, I'm at a point in my life where it's like, I'm 31. I got nothing going for me other than, like, a Twitch and YouTube channel, and, like, I'm chronically unhappy with my entire life and like I hate video games like there's no joy left in them like I, I do them I've been doing them I've had to play them for like 10 hours a day for 10 years this is three thousand nine hundred ninety five dollars. I have that money now I literally have that money now part of me gets excited thinking about it that by the summer of next year I might not be a fat dude anymore if I go this route I could pursue things outside the house that I normally wouldn't do. I'd have better energy. Um, I wouldn't be a slave to food. I wouldn't be a prisoner of my own body anymore. I might be able to find a, a loving relationship that will last and not people that will give up on me because I can't be as mobile or as active as a boyfriend needs to be. Um, Even so, the failure rate of the Mexican doctor was significantly higher than that of the American doctor. Soon, he began soliciting donations for the surgery during his streams in the event he chose to get it in America. As he floundered on which doctor to visit, the most dedicated among the new group of detractors would congregate in servers hosted on Discord with names such as Whale Watchers and Sean Ranklin fans, and soon, Ew. at least one had in excess of 1,000 members. What was perhaps more remarkable was that when Jordy became aware of these Discord servers, he requested to join them so that he could have a discussion with their denizens, and many people eagerly obliged his request for conversation. It appears that this meeting took place in early 2018, recorded and uploaded by Wings Tings in a video edited to Wings highlight what shout out to, shout out to Wings uh, Wings Tings they found to be the most interesting parts. You wouldn't make videos that just trash me. Unremercifully. So you guys 
have kept me up crying so many nights. People said videos being made, and the fact is, like, you're going to hurt my chances to get a job later on in life. Why do you feel the need to pick on me, though? Like, seriously, like, I... Mings, I'll be brutally honest with you, right? The only reason that these channels exist is because you react. Because I react, but I'm, I can't stop reacting. I'm never going to stop reacting. It's part of my personality. The fact is, like, you, how am I supposed to move on if you guys keep creating things? Ignore it. You See? can't ignore it. You can't ignore it, dude. You can ignore it. You can. We're just fans, man. Just take the videos down. Just take. Just delete oh, the channels. Can't take this shit no more, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm You're sorry. fucking asshole. You're an asshole. You realize that? You, you're making fun of an honest reaction, dude. But like you in real life, I really do. I would beat your fucking teeth in. I would beat your fucking teeth in, dude. I really would. Threaten, man. Come on. You don't doubt that. What are you going to do to me? What are you going to do to me? What are you going to do? Put your bitch ass in the kneecap. That's what I'd do. Oh, I'd incapacitate you, and then I'd beat you with the fucking pistol grip until your teeth fell out your head. I hate you. <laughs> He's so fucking much, dude. Like, literally. Like, I don't, I've done nothing to you guys. I've done literally zero to you. You're not helping me. You're the you're motherfucker sitting online right now with like a picture of me with like tears on his face. <laughs> you're sitting on a channel dedicated to me. Your whole YouTube channel is dedicated to me. You have a shrine of how much you worship me. All, all you do is In the end, little came of this meeting for Jordy besides further ridicule. But besides making new enemies, he would quite suddenly encounter oh, an old one. My man dug his ear inside of the low ball that shit and then sniffed it. Oh. During one of his live streams in early 2018, he noted, quote, I don't like Keemstar. I want nothing to do with him. If I had my way and I could will it, I wish he would get in a car wreck. I literally do. He's the only person I can think of right now that I wish would literally die. I'm dead serious. Like, if somebody deserved to die on this planet, Daniel King would be one of them. I'm not, that's not, that's dead serious. Wow. Like, if, if you wanted to do Sharia law, Daniel King should be one of the first people to die and have his hands chopped off. He's a despicable person, and that is word, word to your mother truth right there. Shortly afterward, Keemstar would upload a video voicing his displeasure upon learning of this comment. I laughed. I laughed. I laughed my ass off. And Blade laughed his ass off and Overflow laughed his ass off. And the more I thought about it, the laughter just turned into anger. I'm mad. Now, should I be mad? No. Wings is known for saying dumb, stupid shit and is never held accountable for his words. Uh, so yeah, I shouldn't be mad, but I am. And the reason why I'm mad is because Wing said that I'm evil. I'm the most evil person that he's ever met. But then went on to say that I should die. He went on to say that I should die. Right. You have one hour to agree with a fucking debate with me, or I'm taking this to Twitch staff, and they're gonna decide whether or not it was a death threat or not. I'm not playing any games. The two would confront each other once again in a live stream, during Ooh. which they would attack and insult each other, enumerating how each of them had somehow wronged the other or had committed morally reprehensible actions over the years. But this time, where Jordy once had been in a position of power, he was now much weaker in terms of influence. I, all, I, all that clip simply states is, I don't like who you are as a person. And in my personal experience, you're one of the worst people I've ever met. Like, on a moral standpoint. So times. I tried to help you so many times. I, I got you involved with the Billionaire's Challenge thing. How about how about right. after the Billionaire's Challenge where you and Blade decided to sit there and make fun of me and call me a retard, saying that you hope Wings continues to make videos forever so you can laugh at me? What about that? But that's the strongest thing you have going for you. I mean, Wings things... What is, about the is, lie you just said just a while ago where you said you're Wing Tings? What about... Things. You're not Wing Tings. And I'll tell you what, Wing Tings is entertaining. And you know why it's entertaining? Because it's all your fuck ups. Like you crying and you being upset. <laughs> that is the most entertaining thing about you. I'm sorry, Wings, but it is. It always has been. And I'm trying to use that to my to better myself. I got I got I, I got I got this surgery. I'm gonna get the surgery done. I'm gonna shed my one of my biggest catalysts in my entire life, hopefully. Hopefully I can find the strength to do that.
As these streams with Jordy tended to go, he began speaking about his own personal anxieties and struggles. Right. And like, I don't have, like, I'm not in the case where I'm like, you know, well, you know, just a dude that's like 250 pounds, like, oh, this didn't work out. Let me fall back on my metal, my metallurgy fucking degree. Well, it's not a degree, but like job, like my metallurgy job. Right, I can't do that. I'm 450 pound land monster that has entropied muscles. Like, what the future for me if I stop this at this point in time is to go telemarket or work in some kind of call center or you know cut movie tickets or something like that. Which is, you know, <laughs> that, that's a good living for a lot of people. But like, it's not what I want for me. Right, and like, let's this get this is so boring. Yeah, no shit. No one cares about your life story. We heard it before, man. We got until you said that you hope that he dies in a car crash. Talk about it. You're literally giving me the like victim card, sad card what, stuff. Whatever you like, want to call it, man. Like the fact is, what why that- Why don't you just stop being a victim? Why don't you just stop being a victim? All right, I'm sorry I'm getting loud and angry. I'm trying stop to stop being, being a, a victim. I'm trying to stop being a victim. Why do you think I'm working toward bettering myself? I'm, I'm gonna give you real advice. This is Let's real advice, Let's all right? 100%. This is like, uh, not Keemstar, this is Dan Keem talking to Jordy. Mm -hmm. You have been doing this for a very long time. And as you do this online internet stuff, what happens with your health and your happiness? Nothing. All right? The only way you are ever, ever going to be happy, honestly, is by quitting the internet. Around this time, Jordy seemed to have made up his mind about getting bariatric surgery, believing that it was the only way that he feasibly could lose weight. While he was still considering both America and Mexico as options, he learned that the American doctor would refuse to perform the operation unless he could reduce his weight to 400 pounds. While Jordy would sometimes share his weight, viewers were consistently dubious about his honesty as he had a history of bending the truth. For example, in 2013 while recording a podcast, he had claimed that he had been shot in the leg after shouting at a man breaking into his mother's car, but he would later admit that this scenario was a fabrication. <laughs> in this case, he claimed to be 460 pounds. This lie dog getting shot. <laughs> he also revealed that he was prescribed a medication called Lexapro, an antidepressant used to control the effects of anxiety. But almost immediately after he stated his intentions, his life would undergo a sudden and violent interruption. On March 6th, only two days after the video about his bariatric surgery, he uploaded a video entitled, So, I Got Swatted, which shows his stream with an empty chair and the sounds of a SWAT team in the background. At one point, a SWAT team member walks in front of the camera for a short time. During this video, they ask who might have called in the team, and Jordy can be overheard giving a particular compilation channel name. This came shortly after the high-profile case of Andrew Finch, who was killed in a swatting incident, and in light of- Yeah, I don't agree with swatting, man. You want to troll, you want to do all this other stuff, Twitch is on. But don't swap, man. Swatting is pretty, that's pretty low. This development, Wings Teams deleted their channel, citing their discomfort with the troll community. Unsurprisingly for onlookers, Jordy was unable to lose the weight in the time frame he had set for himself. And so, he committed to getting the surgery in Mexico, though the ponderous way he went about planning it made onlookers dubious about his resolve. In the meantime, new channels were appearing that copied Sean Ranklin's style of highlighting moments from Jordy's streams. What's remarkable about these highlights, however, is that they would not only highlight his moments of rage and frustration, but also genuinely humorous moments, creating a surprisingly broad view of Jordy. However, the comments would reveal the most prevalent reason for viewers to watch these videos, as did the donation messages, such as one that read, quote, can you call your grandma? I have a turd stuck up my ass and I need help getting it out. People would tease him with his verbal tics, such as real talk, look here, and big ups, big ups. as well as frequently quoting big Sean ups. Ranklin's first video. They would also come up with numerous names for him. 
For example, upon discovering documentation that someone had at least once lived at Jordy's address by the name of Richard, people began to suspect that this was Jordy's legal first name. While this rumor proved untrue, calling Jordy Richard clearly upset him, and so people began calling him variations of it, with one common comment becoming, Big Ups Liquid Richard. They also began teasing him for his love of Wendy's banquet chili meals. and microwaved banquet meals, which he would occasionally eat on stream. By this point, he had become openly vocal about the reason he continued to stream. The only way I play this game is in hopes to get donations and subscriptions. Like, that, that's the only reason I'm playing it. In a somewhat surprising turn of events, the members of the Painkiller Already podcast began discussing Jordy as well, speculating whether or not he would receive the surgery for which he had pined for years. Most notably, on April 21st, the Painkiller Already podcast hosted content producer Mr. Mediker, and a significant portion of the episode was dedicated to Woody and Kyle describing Jordy and his numerous misadventures, told with a derisive and comedic zeal. Sean Ranklin, using a quote from Kyle, released a video on March 22nd, 2018, in which he describes a scene from one of Jordy's streams that he had seen highlighted from one of the compilation channels. I was watching a stream clip the other day, and it was probably the darkest thing I'd ever seen in Wing's uh, stream before, and he went and produced a photograph, a framed picture, and he was like, this is me when I weighed, I want to say 240 pounds, oh, and no. something happens. Something deep happened. He was just like, like a loss of hope. Like there was a moment where he was like, that's where I was and this is where I am. It was a dark moment. But then he started eating uh, his banquet meal and, and, and that perked us right back up. Cause he, does, he, he chews like a dog, you know, just to ch chomp, chomp, swallow, chomp, chomp, swallow. And that banquet meal's gone. And, and then when he was done with it, he starts scraping up all the gravy with the fork and like getting all the juices that, that were in the bottom of the plastic tray. And we're just like, this is not a diet. God Jordy damn. continued to engage with the so-called troll discords as well, but with one important difference. He would stream at least some of these interactions on Twitch, such as one instance which Sean Ranklin uploaded onto their channel. Immediately upon joining, people began teasing him with well-known quotes. I, I'm only going to talk and it's only going to be civilized if it's if you guys play clips like you're doing right now if you if you try to be funny if you try to do any meme shit I leave instantly and I don't I stop talking while it's not certain precisely how many people joined it quickly devolved into people talking over one another yeah Yo, what's up? shout out to John Ranklin <laughs> all right one more time one more one more meme and I'm out <laughs> Just let you guys know. Despite his threats to leave, he found himself unable for some time. I'm getting the sur I'm getting the fucking surgery, dude. I'm getting it. Okay, buddy. Yeah, all right, right. I'm sure. Okay. You're a liquid Richard. You can go. You, all right, I'm out. By the way, whoever just did that, I'm out. I'm getting. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. I'm looking here. I'm looking. Listen, all right. <laughs> you see, Wayne, you're too scared to face your own reality. I'm getting the fucking surgery, dude. Here's the truth. Here's the truth about my life, right? I'm 460 pounds. I'm I'm 460 pounds. My grand my my grandma can't take care of me the rest of her life, and she she I don't know how much longer she's gonna live. So like if I don't get this surgery, there's nobody there for me in life. So if I get bedridden, guess what? I'm pretty much fucked. So I have to get the surgery. There is nothing to do with. You see how you act, dude? Like seriously. Or little kid, shut the fuck up. You, little kid, you just went, you just went. Alright, Jordan, Jordan, we'll move on. Alright, look here, look here, look, listen. I'm not fighting Keemstar. I'm not going on PK. Here's what I'm most likely going to do. I'm most likely going to, I'm most likely just going to quit, and you're going to lose your toy. Dang, you're going to. How about that? How about that guy? You know why I won't? You know I haven't quit yet. Why, why don't I have the balls to quit? I have enough money to pay my house off and the surgery and do everything I need to do. You fucking cry on stream for money. You don't have the balls. I haven't cried on stream for money in a long time. L listen, shut up. Let me speak a fucking sentence without people interjecting. Yeah, nah, 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 this is gonna be on Twitter tomorrow. It doesn't matter. Here, here, here's the thing. The only, the only reason I, 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 let me talk. Mute them.
<laughs> yeah, and I will say that, like, if you're trying to get a hold of wings, or if you're trying to, and I said this before when I reacted to this on um, video, you don't have a million motherfuckers in the damn Discord or whatever they're talking. Um, you have a few people who's trying to actually conversate and not just because it's just mayhem right now. You know what I mean? And that's not you're not gonna get your point across, or there's not gonna be any kind of meaningful discuss discussion going on. Shout out the painkiller already subreddit would also be used as a place for those interested in Jordy to congregate, occasionally criticizing him and pointing out inconsistencies in some of his claims. For example, on May 28th, someone with particular interest in him created a long Reddit post in which they detailed why they believed he had lied about scheduling his surgery in Mexico. Of note was the fact that this person had tested Jordy's honesty by applying for bariatric surgery at the same location. Where Jordy had claimed that it took some time to be scheduled, this person claimed that, in his experience, the clinic offered to schedule the surgery as soon as he paid the $500 deposit. Jordy would discuss this mounting scrutiny during his streams. I had to mention, I'm scared to fucking death of the surgery. I'm scared of it. Who do I get to talk to about it? Nobody. Because if I talk about anything, or er everything, there's a video made about it, and there's 20,000 people laughing at me, or there's a podcast with 100,000 viewers making fun of me, calling me a fucking idiot. What, what, what is there? It's like, seriously, what is there? I get, what, what do I do this for a privilege for? Like, seriously, about a, a privilege to fucking sleep all goddamn day? Play the same fucking games over and over and over again? To feel like shit, to realize nobody's ever going to fucking love me? Like, what, what is the privilege that I fucking get? No, I don't got any friends, dude. I spend my entire life sitting in this fucking room. By this point, he also had begun taking his Lexapro, despite his initial reservations. Like, I'm not off Lexapro. This is coming through Lexapro. Because I'm always stressed out. Like, like y'all motherfuckers give me so much anxiety. Anxiety meds aren't even working for me right now. I'm a fat dude. I'm going to cheat. It's going to happen. One of the reasons I'm getting this surgery is I'm trying to buy willpower. I'm trying to fuck myself up so badly that if I cheat, I'm going to vomit. And I'm going to throw up. And I'm, my body will reject food to the point that I force myself to learn. You can't buy willpower, man. You either have it or you don't, you know? And that's why you are the way you are today is because you didn't have that willpower. No matter how many surgeries you get, how many, you know what I mean, things that you get, you could, like, how many healthy foods that you buy and stuff, you got to have the willpower to actually go through with that. You know what I mean? So it doesn't matter. You can't buy willpower. A new way. Soon after this stream, he would take to the Reddit thread and admit that the creator of the thread was correct. He had indeed not yet paid the deposit due to nervousness over the procedure. On June 16th, the members of the Painkiller Already podcast were discussing the likelihood of Jordy actually scheduling and receiving the surgery. So, wing surgery is, is quickly approaching. I um, may lose $5. I'm starting to think that he's telling the truth on this. Yeah, get ready to dole that out. I, I would like it in doubloons. <laughs> I saw him that much. He breaks out the happy pills and so I don't watch his streams very much, but I the highlight videos, I swear I haven't even subscribed to any of the highlight video channels, but because I watch them all, YouTube knows that I secretly want to and, and keeps mm -hmm. suggesting them from <laughs> And uh, yeah he takes it and he's just like shaker 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 On June 28, 2018, Jordy posted pictures of himself in a hospital gown to his Twitter feed, and soon he was back in his mother's modular home. He had opted for a surgery called a vertical sleeve gastrectomy, in which approximately 90% of the stomach is removed. Almost immediately, he began to question his decision. Like, I wanted my life to be so much different after the surgery, and it's not really. It's not. Like, I just wow. text just like 20 minutes ago and canceled the plans I had for today because I'm going to have to stream again today to try to keep my subs up. And, you know, like, I'm stuck in the same routine again where it's like I'm 
fucking here. And like right now, like I'm so sick of sitting in chairs. That's the reason I bought this chair today on a whim. Like I'm so sick of like my like my body hurting for sitting in chairs because I'm so big. And like I want to lose weight faster than I'm losing weight right now. And I'm not doing everything I could be doing to help that along. Like I'm not. He continued to stream, and in part due to his new antidepressants, he had stopped reacting with such explosive anger as he once had, though he still would often read troll donations aloud before realizing what they were, or <laughs> simply out of exasperation. It's also possible that he recognized how much of his income was coming from these troll donations, and he wanted to encourage them to a certain degree. Part of redemption, draw me like one of your banquet meals, you sexy man. I want to get... Coomdong? Oh. How many months do you have left to you? I don't have HIV, man. Hey, Carbine PPSH. Wow, you're really fat. That's cool. Mm, let's do the donation rundown. Trailer Park Redemption donated one. I can respect that one. <laughs> what? The guy goes, I, I donate, but since I'm in Great Britain, it's in pounds, and you obviously don't need no more of those. Bob Gnarly. <laughs> What's cool? I know you're a lazy fucking bum who doesn't want to work because I'm also 46 pounds, yet I still work 60 hours a week doing manual labor. Get a job, you parasite. However, while few developments were occurring post-surgery for Jordy, the community around him would begin experiencing significant upheavals, some of which were revealed publicly. In early 2019, a man named Joshua Moon, best known as Noel, the owner and operator of the Kiwi Farms, hosted a stream in which he discussed the history of Jordy. The most surprising part of his stream wasn't the section about Jordy himself, but rather the troll community that had built around him. And my rabbit hole into this world started with asking a question. Who is lean? And the answer I got to that question was <laughs> lol you mad bro <laughs> mad bro mad piss pisses on shithead piss <laughs> piss 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 lamau <laughs> lol piss and that my friends, is the fucking moment I decided, holy shit, these people are fucking crazy. These people are fucking nuts. This is not just some random fucking faggot from their Discord. This is a trusted user. There's like 12 of these people. It's a Discord with fuck? like a thousand motherfuckers. And this motherfucker is at the tippy top. He's he's up there in the upper echelons of, of the trolldom. This shit. Uh, I, I, when I was in there asking people about Lean, a couple days after I spoke to Lean, people are like, well, you know, he started to monetize his videos. I'm like, oh, is that it? And they're like, no, he makes him look positive in his videos. Well, fucking goddamn, that sounds awful. Let's, let's look at this. Let's look at one of these DS positive videos that Lean put out on Wings of Redemption. It's, it's just, it's fucking stupid. Like... All their fucking effort, they still couldn't stop me from going for I know, I, I, I watched a few things of Lean, you know what I mean? 40 and 10. After all their fucking effort, they still couldn't do it. And this is what pisses them off. In his videos, if Wings of Redemption gets trolled the fuck out, but still ends up 40 to 10 with a 4 to 1 KD, a very, very good score, he'll include it in his highlight clips. And that is verboten. It is not allowed. If he does well in the video game, you cut that shit out. You leave that on the clipping floor. Soon after, he reveals that apparently, Lean claimed to a troll server that he had hired people to gather the personal information of everyone present in it. After trying to talk to the what people the in the troll server, Noel was banned, and the owners completely purged the chat logs of the entire channel in order to prevent Joshua from gathering information and taking screenshots of the conversation. But this wasn't the only piece of infighting that was occurring. Some months later, on July 3rd, the Wings of Redemption what? subreddit's Discord server was, quote, given a holy cleansing. One of the moderators of the subreddit wrote that, quote, 
The server has fallen down a manhole of noxious biohazard shit, and it all started with road banning users for having different political opinions in favor of keeping user Soda Sweet as a mod, who was a guy with children that was sending and receiving nudes from another user by the name of 3PM, who was another bloke that enjoyed cross-dressing and posing as a female. What End the quote. fuck? He went on to describe the arguments and fights that <laughs> members would have there, specifically attacking the head admin on the server. As the troll community fought among itself, Jordy continued his habit of Twitch streaming, maintaining a view count between 300 and 700 consistently, with irregular donations. But so far, very little has changed. While he has visibly lost weight as a result of his surgery, he has stated that he is still over 300 pounds, much heavier than he should have been a year after his surgery. He continues to right. state that he wants to stop making gaming content online, but he can't convince himself to leave the reliable money, and so, he continues to read troll donations and ban accounts from his stream chat, only for the trolls to replace them with new accounts shortly afterward. Right. Many speculate that Jordy may only stop streaming on Twitch when people stop donating money, but the amount he receives only seems to be increasing with time, as people pay to send him messages in order to harass him. Jordy Jordan now stands as an example of what happens when someone without the proper mental fortitude flexibility, or attitude is suddenly given fame in a niche area, and when someone's poor social habits alienate them from any kind of support network, whether in the form of their contemporaries or their viewer base. He also shows what can happen to those who feel themselves incapable of making any sort of significant change in their lives, and the fates to which they may consign themselves. Wow. That's it? That's how she rolled? Hello, Jordy. Hello. Oh, yeah, that's all she wrote. All right, y'all, that was the rabbit hole of Wings of Redemption. It's crazy, man. Um, This dude is still going to this day doing the same bullshit. And this dude's been at it since, what, 2009? That shit's crazy. But it is what it is. Where we go from here, I'm not really sure. I just, you know, wake up every day, try to find a video to watch for, you know, my people. If you got a suggestion, comment down below. Let's watch together because I like watching what you guys like watching. Um, you guys suggest these crazy videos that end up being bangers. But you guys have a good one, and I'll see you later. Enjoy your day.